Just now, today is Friday. Praise God. Ah, listen, I bless God for all the testimonies that is coming your way. I, I, I've been receiving testimonies of people's needs being met supernaturally. So, listen, are you ready to release your faith now? Say with me, say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, that's it. You know, the prayer is just so simple, but so powerful. Why is it powerful? Because the God we pray to hears our prayers. And when he hears our prayers, what does he do? He answers. The Bible says, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know we have our petition Granted, it's as simple as that. Did God hear us when we prayed just now? Yes, he did. Now, if we know that he has heard us, what does that mean? That bill, that thing we need to do today, I know that petition has been granted. Praise God. Today is going to be a great day for you, I'm telling you. Now, let's go into today's word. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare right that as your truth comes forth, burdens are being lifted yokes are being destroyed right now oh hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus your life is indeed moving into another level yes yes in the name of the lord jesus christ amen now we've been we've been looking at how because because we're in the season of manifestation so we've been looking at how do we manifest how 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 do i show forth and that's what brought us to the book of John chapter 17 and Jesus praying and he says that the world I love that part it's gone beyond us and him I don't say, I don't, I, it doesn't care what anybody thinks about me I know I love Jesus and I know ah, 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 ah. he cares what people think about you Jesus cared what people thought about him. One day he asked his disciple, who do people say that I, the son of man, am? And then he began to say different things. Then he said, okay, hold on, hold on. What about you? Who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Listen, don't live a selfish life. That's not the life he has called us to. He has not called us to live a selfish life. He has called us to live a life of impact. He has called us to live a life of influence. How? He wants the world to know. I told you the other day, we are on a one goal. And what's that goal? Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Now, how is that going to happen? Not because Jesus is going to appear on the sky and say, all of you that didn't believe in me, can you now see me? Can you see that I'm real? No, that's not going to happen. They, he will appear, they will not see him. Hey, listen, it is... You remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Now, the Bible says, Lazarus died and then angels carried him. And then the rich man died also. And then one day, the rich man lifted up his eyes and he saw Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham. And then he said, ah, is that not that um, beggar that used to beg me for crumbs? But he's in a better place. The rich man knew that he, he was tormented because there was torment where he was. So he said, ah, please, Father Abraham, he recognized Abraham. He said, Father Abraham, please, can you tell Lazarus to just take a drop, take his finger, dip his finger in water, and let him just drop? Now, that's to tell you that where they were was close enough that Lazarus could actually drop water. Think about it. Think about it. 
Now another day we'll talk about hell and, and, and stuff and where the dead go to. That's another teaching. You know, we make this mistake of thinking when, when, it, when, when a Christian dies, he's gone to heaven. No, he, he is not gone to heaven. There is no dead person in heaven. No one. No one that is dead can get into heaven. No one. No one. Believe me, no one. Praise God. So where did they go to? That's another teaching entirely. So uh, Bible say, where the rich man was and where Lazarus was. Now Lazarus was a good man and he was with Father Abraham. Praise God. And then this man said, let him just take water and just drop into my mouth. I said, sorry. He says, there's a gulf between us. So you can see us close, but he can't do that. He can't do that. Now that gulf doesn't mean there's a big line of separation. No, it may just be that they're in the same place but experiencing different things. I'm telling you the truth. Now then, <laughs> then he said, okay, please do me a favor. Can you send Lazarus to go back to earth? He didn't even say, send me to go back to it, to go and correct me. He says, send Lazarus to go back to it and preach to my brothers. They, they don't need to come to, into this. They need to repent. They don't need to come to where I am. And Abraham told him, says, no. Hey, they've got the prophets there telling them the same things you heard. If they don't believe the prophets that are there, even if one rises from the dead to go preach to them, they will not believe. You see why sometimes you don't magnify all those stories of, of people that say he died and God sent him back to come and preach to, to us the gospel. The, 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 it doesn't mean because he died and now he's preaching. Maybe he was not saved and then God gave him a second chance and then he comes and starts preaching and then he uses that as a testimony. It doesn't mean his message is going to be more powerful than the message of someone who was just preaching the gospel. No, it doesn't. The fact that he rose, he he died and came back won't make his message more powerful. But you know, people are moved with such dramas. And then, wow, have you heard that man that died and came back? I'm going for. He's having a program. Ah, and then the whole place is packed. And then you listen to the substance of the message. Nothing. Why? Because I told you was it yesterday or day before yesterday. You don't grow in understanding automatically. No, you don't. And then he comes and starts telling us everything he saw. It doesn't make it doesn't make for 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 salvation truly. Because the principle of God is simple: if they don't believe the words that they are hearing, even if one rises from the dead to go preach to them, they will not believe. Why? Because the mind is the same mind. The message is the same message. The Bible says, because of the simplicity of the gospel, many stumble at it. It's too simple. Words, but if you are not quickened by the Holy Spirit, there is no way this word will make any sense to you. But those that have yielded to the Spirit of God, those that have been quickened by the Spirit of God, they 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 pick this word and then they just read one line, and then for the next three hours they are praying. They are praying because I, I, I for example, I read to you, and it says the world may know that God loves you just the same way He loves Jesus. Have you considered that statement? Or you say, yeah, but then, you know, we, you know some, some people even read, eh, we can't attain to that, so just forget it. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. It should drive you to a place of fellowship. It should drive you to a place of asking many questions. Asking yourself many questions. Who am I indeed? I mean, does God, you mean God loves me the same way he loves Jesus? Come on now. So what am I doing with my life? Hey, you're here being a beggarly person. Oh God, if you would just give me this job. See this job, Father. If you would just give me this, I will serve you for the rest of my life. And hey, you think that, you, you think God's like, hmm, did he always say that he will serve me for the rest of my life, for the rest of his life? Ah, let's give him the job because so that he will serve me. Come on now. It's much more beyond that. He wants the world to know that he loves you. Think about Jesus. They tried to arrest him. The Bible said they took him the first time he preached the message in the synagogue and, and declared forth his ministry. The Bible said they were so angry. They took him out of the synagogue, took him to, out of the city, took him to the cliff of the mountain. And their intention was to throw him headlong. You know? They would just take him to that mount, that cliff. And then they just grab him, turn him upside down and leave him to fall. That was their intention. 
And then the Bible said, when they got there, when they got to that edge, Jesus just, you know, I'm sure all the while they were going, Jesus said, Holy Spirit, what do I do? What, how, how, do I, how do I get out of these people? And then we just said, hey, just turn around and go home. And they're like, okay. So, so once he heard that word from the Holy Spirit, and he got there and like, hey, what is it? And like, ah, what is it? He just turned around and went home. So what happened to everybody? And I've had that experience before. I think I've shared it many times. You know, many years ago when we were in school, we were out praying in the field and then these guys came with guns and, you know, Dane guns. And hey, they were trying to harass us. And so I said, calm down, calm down. So when, when they saw that we're not aggressive and all that, they said, oh, they must take us to the security. Uh, they were the local vigilante or something like that. So they took us to the school security. And then we got there. So we are students, you know. Um, where is your ID card? Where is this? Where is this? Where is this? I can't even remember the, those details of why. And you know, while we're all arguing out there, I said, they we're not doing anything. We we're praying. Ask them what they saw us doing. They will tell you we we're praying, you know. And then one of them now said that, okay, that they're going to put us behind the counter till in the morning. This was about 12 midnight or thereabouts. They were going to put us behind the counter till morning time. And when I heard that, I said, no. So I just said, Holy Spirit, what do I do? And I, I just said, the Holy Spirit, go home. That's what he said to me. He said, go home. So they were like, you, you were going to, you're going to, and then they were trying to move us behind the counter and then they said, go home. So I just turned to the people with me. I said, let's go. The moment I said, let's go, they just followed me. And guess what? We walked through all of them and just left just like that <laughs> now, now in a moment ago we're arguing whether we accept to go behind the counter then go home and that's what happens so i read this jesus did it and i see the same thing in my life that i did it about how did jesus do it the holy ghost spoke to him how did i do it the holy ghost spoke to me Every miracle you see Jesus do, he was following an instruction from the Spirit of God. And that's how we minister. Sometimes we minister by word of knowledge. Do you think, you know, some people think word of knowledge is guesswork, you know, or he just, he just says, there's somebody here with tumor. There's somebody here with leg pain. There's a, he's just saying it so that when the person, if somebody is actually there with a the leg pain, the person will now believe. No, that's not what's going on. We are hearing a voice say, the same way we say it is the same way we heard it. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So we decide to say, I'm seeing someone. Or not because we are, you know, seeing the person and then we're like, oh, I can see someone on, on wheelchair there. And I say, oh, the person on wheelchair, I'm seeing someone on wheelchair. No, we may not even see the person physically. Are you getting what I'm saying? It, we hear, we hear him say. So as we hear, we speak. That's, that's how you minister. That's how I'm ministering to you. So that's why sometimes you, you know, okay, I'm going to start here and I'm going to, but then, but the moment you start, you, you see where you are. You're like, in your mind, you're like, what, what am I doing here? But you just keep following. Eh? By the time you're done, like even you, the minister, even you, the preacher, we're like, whoa, I made sense. <laughs> God. Yeah. Because sometimes we, we teach by faith. Now, you will study, you pray, you, you prepare. But then, if you're a true minister of God, you know you won't come to that meeting and start reciting what you have read and reciting what you have studied. <laughs> you know you won't. You start out there because you pray and then open your Bibles to this. The moment you say open your Bible to this, you are trusting the Holy Ghost for utterance. And then soon, you, you finish reading that scripture and then you hear in your spirit, open source of scripture. And then you're, you're, in your mind, now you're like, okay. You have announced it already because you, you, you have to announce it. So, okay. And then you now open it. And then by the time you open it, you're, whoa, ho, 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 what's going on here? Now, he has taken over that meeting. And you are just following like an errand boy. Because <laughs> you didn't prepare for these parts. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. That's how we minister. 
Now, the same way we minister is the same way we bring favor. Now, I'm not just talking about preachers. I'm talking about you. It's the same thing. The same thing. Like Jesus, his desire is that the world will get to know. Listen, I pray over your life today. That from today, you will begin to receive the kind of miracles that will begin to get the world's attention to you. And until the world realizes that God loves you the same way that he loved Jesus, until you get to that point, God will not rest his arm from you. I declare that name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is taking you to higher grounds. He is taking you to the place that everyone that have ever known you will bear record, will bear this testimony concerning you that God loves you so much. Just like he loved Jesus. I declare this is your portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This will be the lifestyle you begin to live from henceforth. This shall be the work that God is going to be walking with you from henceforth. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be blessed with this. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you next week. Praise God. Or if you can join us in the launch our prayer meeting, join us. God bless you. Bye-bye.